Gorgeous from the Frat House. We're here to do another One Book July 2018 video. This one is the six main apps that I use to streamline and supplement my paper planner. Mostly streamline. These six apps are apps that I started to use that helped me get stuff out of my planner. It's stuff that I didn't have to carry with me anymore because I had it on the phone instead. Now I am on an iPhone. It's a 7 Plus. I do not have access to an Android device to be able to show you guys these apps on an Android device, but I will put in both the description box below and in the blog post where this video will be embedded where these apps are available, what you know, whether they're available for both iOS and Android, just so that everybody can see what is and is not available. Unfortunately, I have no access to an Android device to be able to show you guys this stuff actually on an Android. Now, as the month goes on, I will probably be showing you guys some of these also on the laptop. A few of these apps are available on iPhone, iPad, um, Mac, Windows, so, um, but that's, those are when I'm going to get a little more in depth, like with OmniFocus, let's say. These are just the six apps that I use to really streamline what I have going on in the paper planner. The first one is the Clue app right there and I won't open it up because that's all like my personal health stuff um, that's all what I like to call when I talk to the boys about it. it's girl stuff so I don't mean that to be exclusionary that's not what I mean but it's like my my body my cycle um, you can track your your sleep your how you're feeling physically um, your you know how much motivation you have in a day it tracks a lot of stuff so that is all stuff that I was doing on paper all of that tracking my own body stuff I do all that in the clue app now so that is my first one is clue uh, the second one would be I'm gonna throw this one in even though it's not necessarily a planning app it is called drafts Four. it's right there next to bit.ly right there and this one is really quick really great for quick input so if you can see if I hit it it opens up and it's ready to type immediately so I use this for a couple different things um, you can set it up to export into your OmniFocus Dropbox or OmniFocus Dropbox OmniFocus inbox so I use that if there's something I really quick want to throw into my inbox and OmniFocus I just get it in there this way. I open up drafts. It keeps a copy of it in the drafts app. Plus, it'll throw it into the OmniFocus inbox if I tell it to. Um, I, this also saves me time, so it kind of helps me with planning um, for repetitive stuff. I use this constantly over the summer when Mike has a lot of clinic hours because he's in between preseason hockey stuff. Um, so I help him do the clinic schedule. So I could put all of his availability into one note in drafts. And as those appointments fill up, I can just delete them off of there and then copy and paste it into another text message or email or, you know, however I'm scheduling people. It saves me a lot of retyping, avoids double booking, things like that. So the drafts app, and it does a bunch of stuff, you guys. You can use Markdown, you can send stuff to Evernote. It has a ton of options in it. So that gets a lot of mileage from me. Um, the next one would be Money Wiz 3, and that's another one I'm not going to open because obviously money, it's our finances, um, but it is that little guy right there. That allowed me to take the entire checkbook register out of my planner. I used to keep a checkbook register and I would highlight, you know, groceries were a certain color, bills were a certain color, um, you know, stuff for the kids were certain colors, and I used to keep track of all that. And at the end of the month, I would add everything up. I was usually pretty good about doing it at the end of every week, but not always, so it would pile up at the end of the month, um, and then writing out what we spent on what for that particular month. The MoneyWiz app has allowed me to, it has very quick input, so I can get stuff in there quickly. I've got the checking account, the savings account, cash even. I keep track of all of that, and there are tons of categories that are preloaded in there, plus you can create your own categories. So you can get down to as much detail as you want as far as categorizing where your money is going, and then you can real quick have it pull reports so that you can see, okay, last month we spent X amount of dollars on groceries or for gas in the cars or whatever the case may be. Um, if I want to remember how much a certain car repair was, it's very quick to search and find that stuff. So that is Money Wiz 3. Um, if you watched my paper planning, my summer 2018 planner setup, I do still have a spending tracker in there from Peanuts Planner Co. That is for the stuff that I, I want to kind of be accountable for writing down on paper what I spent. So like planning stuff. If I spend money on any kind of planning stuff, whether it's a, an insert or a traveler's notebook or um, a ring binder, charms, you know, digital stuff, 
anything I spend that's planner related, I make myself write it down because then I tend to be a little more accountable and a little more aware of where that money and how much I'm going through every month because I want to keep that, you know, reasonable. So I do still have that little bit of spending in my planner, but all of the stuff, like all the kid stuff and the house stuff and all that, um, that all goes in Money Wiz 3. My next one is Evernote. I know you're not surprised. <laughs> um, I've been an Evernote user for years and years and years. I don't tend to use, while it does have this function, I don't tend to use checklists in it. You can. You can create checklists within notes. Um, I like the, the organization. I like having notebooks that then I can put notes into. Um, I like that I use Chrome on my laptop. I really love that if you have the Evernote extension enabled in Chrome, when you're looking something up, when you get your Google search results in Chrome, off to the side there is also a, hey, this is related to the search you just did and it's already in your Evernote. So I can see stuff that I may have looked up before that might pertain to what I'm looking up now and kind of use the resources I've already saved. That's one of my favorite things about Evernote. Um, I use it for archival purposes a lot. I save the PDFs for, you know, if you buy a new appliance of any kind, a lot of times, sometimes they come with the book, sometimes they don't. A lot of times now they're a PDF online. I download that, I throw it into Evernote. Um, so it just makes finding that stuff a lot quicker. I don't have to go digging online for, you know, user manuals for things. Um, I like that I can archive my planner in Evernote. If there's something really important that I've sat and written out by hand, um, something important on like a daily page, I'll snap a picture of it, upload it into Evernote, and it's all searchable. Um, depending on the tier, there are several tiers of um, pay as far as Evernote goes, and we will get into this a, a little more in depth later in the month. Um, but your PDFs are searchable depending on where you are in that, that tier. Uh, network of their their pay tiers, um, your photographs, your PDFs, it's all searchable. It'll actually find the words in those PDFs and make them searchable, which just saves me a lot of time, to be honest with you. Um, I also keep bill confirmations in Evernote. I just forward, you know, we get the bill by email, let's say, when I pay it and I get the confirmation email, I forward that into Evernote as well. Um, if you're unaware of how to do that, um, if you look at your profile in your Evernote account, you have an Evernote email address, and that is the biggest saver for me in so many ways, anytime um, I have any kind of confirmation of anything by email, I automatically forward it to my Evernote account so I have a backup of it to keep my inbox clean. Um, the other way that this is huge in keeping my inbox clean is newsletters, like email newsletters. I have some that I always read that I love. I don't sign up to those sometimes with my regular email address. A lot of times I sign up with my Evernote email address because then that newsletter goes straight to Evernote. A lot of times I cannot get to those things right when I receive them, but then when I get a chunk of time and I want to go through them, I like having them all in one place, and in the meantime, they have not been sitting in my inbox. So I have all that stuff sent straight to my Evernote email account. It's right there in my main default notebook and Evernote when I then am like, okay, I feel like going through those. They're all right there in one spot, which is great. It keeps my inbox clean too. Um, let's see, what was another one? We've done, oh, Fantastical. Fantastical is a calendar app, and let me see if I turned off, I did not turn off Mike's calendar. Um, you can load several calendars into Fantastical. Um, this looks pretty bare right now because it is summer break, but all of the kids' calendars all filter into Fantastical. Mike's entire schedule, he does his whole schedule in Fantastical, which is great because when I'm working on the clinic schedule, I can just schedule stuff and then he'll be able to see it whether he's home or not. You know, it's not on a paper planner where he has to be in front of it to see it. It all syncs up across all devices. Um, it's pretty bare right now. Um, I do also have my deliveries app synced up to this so I can see when I have um, deliveries coming. And then that is what the daily format looks like. So there's the month at the top and then your dailies show up as a list at the bottom. And honestly, you can tell it's summer break right now. Clayton's math class is on there. My mom's birthday is on there. And actually, I have a haircut tomorrow morning that I forgot to put on there. The, the nice thing about Fantastic Hell is we can all use it. I have seven calendars that sync to this. I can see everything for everybody in the family at one shot and everybody else can see everybody's stuff. So during the school year, um, if the kids have a school project due, it's in here. If they know that, oh, they found out about a field trip, 
a lot of times Jack will throw field trip stuff in here and then that reminds me not only that he certain day has a field trip but that he should be bringing me the permission slip for it right <laughs> so I should be seeing that soon um, so that all goes in there test dates for anything um, weekends that Clayton's thinking about coming home because I go to his school and pick him up and bring him home usually every other weekend um, so a lot of times when he thinks he's going to he'll throw it in here and then then I know that's coming um, Mike's entire hockey schedule the travel schedule you know stuff for conferences anything like that all goes in here the whole family can see it at once and then if we're all, you know trying to plan something or for wanting to know if we can do something on a certain day we can see everybody's stuff in one shot I don't have to track down a bunch of kids and ask do you know what you're doing on such and such a day um, or you know send text messages if you know like to the one that you know, away at school you know are you gonna be home such and such a weekend it's really quick and easy to look um, I also like for fantastic Hell that all I have to do to change the format is here it is upright and if I tip it sideways it goes to a vertical I hope you guys can see that it goes to a vertical week so all of my days are vertical blocks of time already blocked out reminders come up at the top everything is color coded and then when I turn it back it goes right to the list again so that is Mike really really likes this for his schedule and uh, I got right on board with that because I really liked it as well I personally don't like to keep my entire calendar only digitally that's just me um, but he does keep his whole calendar digitally and then uses paper for lists and stuff and then my last big one is OmniFocus. OmniFocus gets a lot of mileage on my phone sometimes on my laptop uh, but I do not use all the bells and whistles that it provides. I don't need them and I don't want to get overwhelmed by them. So I only use it for what I need to use it for. Um, one of my favorite things about OmniFocus is the functionality of um, being able to send things into your inbox in OmniFocus. I tend to, especially very late at night, um, I will be you know, browsing the internet, reading articles, whatever the case may be, and if there's something I want to remember for whatever reason, whether it's for something I've just been interested in and I've been reading about, something I read that kind of sparks something in my head and I want to journal about it, it is very quick in the browser, on the phone, to send stuff directly to the OmniFocus inbox. It will send the URL with it, you can attach photos, you can attach voice memos, all to one task in the inbox, or you can even file it under different projects. Um, it has a forecast view where you can see both your calendar events and your task list for a particular day. Um, so I can't, let's see, yeah, my stuff is showing up on there. Um, so here, I didn't mark stuff off from yesterday, but here is the forecast view and then if there were things, there wasn't anything scheduled yesterday, but if there was stuff scheduled, it would show up right above these red circles. And they're red because I didn't check them off last night. <laughs> that stuff got done. I just forgot to check it off. Been fighting with recording this all day and I haven't caught up on like any of my planner stuff today. Um, you can also see across the top the ribbon right here that shows you how many tasks are due on each day. Um, very, very GTD friendly. Um, the tags option here lets you tag your tasks. So that I tend to use for context. Now because I'm home a lot, context isn't always necessarily um, a thing that I use. It's not necessary for me to get stuff done. But it is nice if I have stuff that I can only do on the laptop for whatever reason, I will tag that stuff laptop, that task or that group of tasks laptop. And then if I'm sitting down at the laptop, if I've got some quiet and that's what I'm going to do, I can pull up all the tasks that are tagged laptop and see, okay, I'm right here at the desk right now. What can I get done? Um, the really, really great thing about OmniFocus is you can see any tasks that are due across all all of your projects. Um, now I have heard from a couple of people that there are some pieces of project management software out there in which you can see all the tasks that are due but only for a particular project. So if you want to see what's due a certain day and you have several projects going, you have to look at project A, what is due today or tomorrow. Project B, what is due today. I That just would not work for my brain just the way I do things doesn't make it right or wrong, it's just the way my brain works. With OmniFocus, I can see all the tasks that are due today across all the projects. That's what I need. I just need to see what I need to get done, say, tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so, um, and then there's also a review option, and that allows you to, once a week, 
go through all the projects that you have saved in here and just I just tend to give them a quick look over. Did I get everything done in this project that I wanted to get done this week? Okay, I didn't. I need to bump those dates around so that I do get it done. Or is this project not applicable anymore? Or is this a project that I want to do but there's no way I'm going to get to it, say, for another month at least. So you can defer a project out when you know you're not going to touch it for a little while and then it kind of stays in the periphery, out of sight, and then I don't feel overwhelmed by constantly seeing a project that I can't work on right now and I can focus on what I do want to work on right now. And there are several different um, things that you can do with OmniFocus is far from very simple to very complex. I do tend to err toward the simple side. I find it to be a really good place for me to outline the steps of a large project. So I can, you know, with a project and then, or, or a large file, you can start with a file, which is how I usually start a big project, a file, and then let's say the file was One Book July. Let's, for example's sake, I would name the file One Book July, project one would be week one video, um, project two would be week two video. I'm not really doing my videos by weeks this year, but you get the point. And then within that first project of the week one video, well, I do, what do I need to research? What do I, you know, I need to record, I need to edit, I need to get all the links together, you know, all those little tasks that make up that one project. All of those projects make up the folder that is, say, One Book July. So I like that I can still have, you know, kind of sub-levels of of things that need to get done. I find it to be really easy input wise to get that done. Um, and I like that I can see it both here on the iPad, which I never really use, um, and on the laptop. It is right in front of me if I need it. So that is my big last one is OmniFocus. Now I realize this isn't a huge, like I said, it's it's not an, a, a massively in-depth video today. I just wanted to give you guys a look at the six apps that I use that have really helped me streamline my paper planner because it's made my paper planning a lot more efficient and a lot less cumbersome. Um, a lot of the reference stuff I keep in Evernote is all stuff I used to keep on paper <laughs> in my planner and I don't have to do that. I don't have to do it anymore. It's it's great for you know documents. Mike and I share a folder in there that has a bunch of documents in it that we both might need at any given time. Um, so it's really great that we can, we can share. It keeps stuff out of my planner everybody in the family can get stuff if we need it in there. Um, OmniFocus is really for those times that I need to kind of flesh out a large project. Sometimes I'm way better doing that on paper. Sometimes I'm way better doing that in OmniFocus. It honestly depends on the project and it just kind of depends on what my brain is doing that day if we're really honest. <laughs> so and then the other apps like Clue, Fantastical, MoneyWiz, and Drafts, those are the ones that just kind of make some of the day-to-day -day stuff a little bit easier, um, a little, uh, taking up a little less space in my planner with that stuff and saving me a lot of work as far as, you know, copying, pasting things over and over like I can do with drafts and the financial stuff and money whiz. I can get all that out of the planner. So coming up next will be some more in-depth videos, um, especially about Evernote, OmniFocus. Um, I'd really like to look at apps that um, you guys all suggested in my direct messages on Instagram, which if you have an app that you suggest, um, like we looked, we talked about list apps a little bit. I'll be doing a video about list apps um, for like grocery lists and things like that. Um, so I've already started all the notes on that one. I'm going to go through some of the apps you guys suggested. Um, if you have something you want me to try to look at, I will try to get to everything. I can't promise I'll get to everything, but I will try this month to get through all of the apps that you're all wanting to see. Um, and maybe we can look at them together and see here's what I personally like, here's what I personally don't like. Um, so we can kind of see what all of our options are because I know I've found that since I got some of that stuff into here, I'm, my paper planning is more streamlined and a little less bulky, a little less cumber cumbersome, which makes it a little more enjoyable. So send me your suggestions for apps you'd like to see, and that's what the next videos are going to be, you guys, is going to be more in-depth looks at some of the stuff I use and some of the stuff you guys recommend. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.